Hi, Internet viewers. Frank Rauscher again. On our last video, we textured all of the breast area. We had shaped the rumps in there and everything else and textured that with a stone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the eyes and we're going to finish the beak as far as uh, getting uh, the, the finish on it. And I'll show you how to do that as well. So uh, bear with me a second and we'll bring things to a close on that end of it. Okay, I'm going to show you how to set the eyes and uh, how we handle uh, putting in the eyes. I'm going to use what they call cork wood. And uh, this is for replacing wood, which I used up in here because I took a little too much out. Very handy to have. And uh, it's a two-part epoxy You you cut a little bit off, knead it, and then apply it. And you can get a feathered edge just by running your fingers down to the end. And you can blend it and everything else. You got a little bit of time. I think it takes about 15 minutes to set up. And then it, it needs a, more time to really cure. But that, that'll do the job. And I'm going to show you here uh, what I'm doing here is I'm going to cut just a little bit off because I use very little. Let's see, I'll use this side right here. And I'm not trying to take a lot because you don't use that much at all. I'm going to take that much out, which is more than enough. I could probably do two or three eyes. I'm going to close the tube. You want to keep that closed at all times, most of the time. And then what I do is I knead it with my fingers just by pushing it together. It's a two-part epoxy, and I'll try to get equal amounts. At least I hope I cut it off close to that. And that should do it. And then I knead it till it comes into one color. And it's got like a, I don't know, pan, a, a tan color and a gray color. And when you get done, the whole thing sort of gets a little on a tannish side. They combine together, and once you get it right, and you don't want to do it too, too long, but you, it, it creates a chemical reaction. So we got that going right now, so I'm gonna leave that there. Now, I'm using a four millimeter eye, and as eyes used to go before, they used to be on wire, but they don't make them that way anymore. So I got these glass eyes with the it, it's uh, painted on the back, it's brown, and that's what you want to use. Now, what I do is I stick the eye in backwards, and let me get my optivizer so I can see better, even though you don't see me with it. I get that eye, and it should be just slightly recessed from the top of here's the outside of the eye and I want that just to be slightly below okay and we will check it out on the other side just so that we don't have to come back and redo anything uh, and I want it backwards not forwards this is you're sticking the eye in backwards okay now on this one it looks like it's protruding out just a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get, this was uh, a ruby ball, but I use it like a burnisher. The grit has been worn off basically. And I stick that into the hole and it literally burns its way in to get to where I want to go. So I when I see the smoke, then I know I got some distance. And I'll do this just a hair more on this side. There you go. And that should be more than enough. Now, with that, like I said, I put the eye in backwards. And it's slightly below the surface. 
and it sits right in there and that's great that's what you want okay so here's what i do i get about a bb size or less and i roll that into a ball and i plop that right into the eye hole okay like so then i pick up the eye and this time I have the eye facing out so that you can see the pupil and everything else. Now I'm getting a pencil with an eraser and I'm going to push that in. I'm going to push that all the way in. Okay, now I'm going to come around with the pencil all the way around to get the excess out of there. And We're basically done. And you want to make sure that that isn't looking bug-eyed and the, uh, the eye is sticking out like a bug. It's not. It, it's recessed in there. And I don't know if, how, if you can see that straight in, but it sticks out a little bit. So I'm going to go back get a little bit more again just so I have the same size and I'm going to plop that plop that right in there and I'm going to get my glass eye put that right about where the hole is get my eraser use that as a pusher and go in sometimes I do it just right, and sometimes I have to push it in again. So I'm going to check it out. I look at the depth. This has to go in just a little bit more. So I will push this in a little bit more. You'll see the membrane, uh, the, <laughs> the epoxy coming out. So here's what I do. I just come around with a nice sharp point. And that gets a nice eye setting in there. Now I look at it in comparison to the other side, and they look pretty equal. So there you are. That's how your eye goes. Now, in some cases, some uh, birds have like not just a membrane, but you would go in and leave some of that and just tap it as you go around and it has like little bumps in it and some birds show up in reality with that in this case here i'm just going to use the membrane as a filler to seal it in there okay so that's a quick way of getting the eyes in and one thing you don't want to do is get this where you have so much that it spreads all over into your burn. The burn uh, will fill up and you'll lose some of your detail. So you're keeping it local to what I just did. And, and again, I made it look easy, you know. Now, the other thing I wanted to do is make sure your beak is all set okay we're going to go with the beak as well to try to finalize the beak i get a bullet it's a diamond and what i do is i come in just lightly smooth it out if there's anything that needs to be balanced out from the top to the bottom you want to do that the other thing you want to do too, besides the burn in there, I go in on a 45 degree angle and get a chamfer and then work it out. And I do that on both sides. I don't go all the way out to the end. And then I do it to the top as well, because that makes it look like the beak is rolling inward. And it's a real light touch. You're hardly going in there and 
and I mean it's real light. So after you've done that, let's see if I have any floating around. Yeah, I'm gonna get some sandpaper. And I usually try to get a fine one. Um, I'm just gonna round the top a little bit, slightly, just to get any hard edges out of the beak. Like so. And I'll just make sure most of the grit's off of there. Now, what I want to explain to you is what I use to seal the beak to make it look bony is I'm going to use super glue. Now, I get this at a dollar store. Usually you can get a couple tubes. Sometimes you can get three. If you go to Harbor Freight, sometimes you can get like 12 or like $3.00. Most of the time, they're like two for a dollar. And uh, I want to use the red one. It's very liquidy. It's, uh, it, it's not a heavy consistency at all. And that's what I want to use. Just to show you the opposite, this is called a gel. And you don't want to use that because when you apply it, it sits on the surface. And we want this to penetrate into the wood of the beak so that it seals the what's the name of the uh, the any of the wood so it it's soaks in where the gel won't so what i do is i take the cap off if i can <laughs> that's the trouble sometimes with there we go with super glue it tends to clog up but for a dollar you get two couple tubes so i'm going to get this but i don't want this coming pouring out so i start getting a little bit out on the end and i just use that and this applicator i use that to spread i don't want this flowing if it comes out too too much aim it this way so it drips back here and not onto your burn okay so I'm going to come on this side. Okay. And then, like I said, try to keep it off your burn. Just do it to where it's the beak itself and not the texturing or anything else. And I'm not overflowing it i'm just trying to get like a little bit of a sheen on there all the way around and i'm going to let that dry okay and that may take uh, a few minutes or something like that so i'll just let that sit once that's set i'm going to ask you to come back with the sandpaper this is after that dries now, and you got to really give it some time, maybe a few minutes, maybe five minutes, and then come back. And I want you to slightly sand it, okay? And that'll put like a, it'll take the glaze off, and you'll have like a, uh, just a, oh, it almost smooths out the wood because it's soaking into the pores. And if there's any excess still on top, the sandpaper will take it down. Now, in the meantime, while that's going on, we want to get this prepped for painting. Okay, oh, there's one other thing. Uh, what I didn't tell you was when we got these grooves in here to come back, and the rump ticks over over here. I'm going to ask you to texture this, what looks like the underneath side of the wing this way. I'm putting some pencil marks so that we could texture that. It's really in tight, but I'm going to come in with a burning pen. And I'll show you that. I'm gonna come in this way. Hope you can see this. 
and I'm just doing like a 45 to the edge right here. And then I'm gonna come back up and it's kept in tight. I'm not trying to go onto the breast area or anything else like that. This is just where the wing was hollowed out a little bit. And it will climb all the way up to here. Okay, and then we lost it up here because it really got real thin. Let me see if I could just put a couple of so I'm gonna come back. I see a little bit more I need to do here. Let me try to keep that as tight to just like that. I think I could come in a little bit more in here. Like so. I missed a spot or two. Then I'm going to go to this side and 45 it this way. So I'm going to come in here. Um, this is really in tight. I didn't make this one. I didn't put a lot of definition. I could have went a little deeper on this, but this is working okay. Yeah, I don't want that too, too showy. Okay, so we got this and this done. Now, the last step before we start painting this, or at least priming it, is we got to clean all of this out, okay? Now, I'm going to try to stay away from the beak as much as I can for the moment. I'm going to, like I said, I'm just doing this to speed it up a little bit, but I don't want you to... Uh, touch the beak. I put, this is a, I'm sorry, this is a horsehair brush, uh, which is real soft, and what this does, it gets all the dust out of the, the piece that you may think is out of there, but it isn't, and I run this at half speed, so the speed you heard before was really ripping it, so I'm going to come up, but not close to the end. And if you notice, and I don't know how noticeable it is, <coughs> I'm going through the whole burn, and sometimes it really lightens up, or darkens, I should say, because the dust gets in there. And what we do is we get all the dust out, so I try to come all the way around, and, uh, and I'm staying away from the beak at the moment. If the beak was dry enough, <coughs> excuse me, I'm even going to go into where I added the quick wood. Then I'm going to do the whole breast. Even though the breast is very light, it's got a, probably a lot of dust in there. And it's always a good thing to use this too to see if you missed any of the markings that you should have captured when you were stoning it. So, cleaning this all out. There you go. So, now the bird has its size in. The beak is sealed somewhat. And then, in a little bit, I will sand that out, but try to do it so it doesn't spread more dust into the bird. And I should have really weighed it, but I didn't till I did that. And then you can clean this out and you can, then you can also brush the, the, the beak as well. And it looks like we're at a point, well, let me see something else I just saw. Now, here's a thing 
On this side, the thinness of this tail is not too bad, but I could see a little bit of white, okay? And so what I'm going to do, I look at this side, and this side is really heavy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my, you want to make it thin because you want to make it not too, too thin, but not to the point that you see that much white. I'm going to have you come in with the bullet, especially on this side, and I'm going to just slope this a little bit more. Up here. And it's really thick right in here. And then, I'm going to do it this way too. Now, this is angling down, so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm only doing the one side, just to thin it down. And I'm trying to get this not to look so thick at the end, because it isn't. The feathers are really fine. Now, this side's not too bad. I will come in and just do a little bit right here on this one. Okay. Now, we're going to let the burner do most of the work now. I'm going to bring back my cradle so I have a support that I can get my finger on here without trying to get it on the bird and I can gauge my burning. So I'm gonna come in again. Hope I'm in the picture here. And again, for those who may need some help uh, seeing things, Optivisors or these magnifiers are really great. And uh, if anybody's ever interested, I do have them available. And I also have them available with lights that would concentrate as you're burning. You can get a spotlight right on the, on your work. So I did the bottom on that one. Now I'm going to do the top side. Now this side, here we go again. I'm going to go on a 45 degree angle. I'm burning down. And what I'm trying to do is make sure that I have a thinner edge at the end here. So it doesn't look like it's a thick feather. That's what you're trying to do. Now, you don't want to get too thin, either. Because then it gets real brittle. And it can break. So you want to keep some thickness. Or the illusion that it comes to a point. Even though it's got some body to it. Now, I'm going to come on this side. Because this is still a little thick on this side. I'm just going to burn a little heavier handed. Just to, when I get to the edge, I'm, I'm coming through. And I don't mean coming through to the other side. I mean I'm coming to the edge. And uh, it, it's starting to not have any white showing at the end. If I do it right, so you don't have any, you have darkness right on through. Same way here. You have very little light, but it's really thin at the very end. Okay, so it doesn't look thick. So if you could do that, that should complete the bird. And now I could even touch, and I can show you. Uh, that I get some sandpaper 
I just sand the beak out. I want to get the glaze out of there. Just like that. I guess. And what this head does too, it, it helps when you go to paint because you have a glaze on there, it doesn't, the paint doesn't want to adhere. So this helps give it some uh, uh, contact. It can grab onto this now that the glaze is off. So I only did that lightly, but you can see the glaze is off of there, at least for the most part. I think I got everything. And I'm not really reshaping. I'm just lightly just getting the like a frosty color in there. Okay. And that's it. So we got the eye set. We got the beak sealed up. We cleaned this out. We did the tail. We did the under the wings here as a final fix up to that and i'm going to continue the painting on the next video and i hope you got something out of this one as well if you did please give me a thumbs up and if you uh would subscribe to my channel or pass the word on to other people that may want to try this i'd appreciate that as well and uh, we will start getting this primed and then ready for painting. And we're starting to get to the end of what we need to do uh, for the chickadee. Okay, so I'll see you on the next video. And uh, thanks again, and I hope you enjoyed this. See ya.